happen every day. You see them on the news, in movies, books, TVs, and even in our own lives. After a tragedy, it seems almost impossible to pick back up and go on with life. Now, you might be wondering what a 15-year-old knows about tragedy. You see, I've had a pretty good life so far with family and friends. I have a good education, a roof over my head, and I've never been hungry a day in my life. But like so many others, September 11th has had an, a profound impact on my life. For me, it was the day I lost my father, Jeremy Glick. He was on Flight 93 and was one of the 40 passengers who stormed the terrorist and tried to take back the plane. Unfortunately, the plane crashed in a field in Pennsylvania and all lives were lost. After a tragedy, you might see some short-term changes. You might feel like there's a pain in your chest. Now, this is called broken heart syndrome because the symptoms are very close to a heart attack, but scientists aren't really sure why it happens yet. The first step right after a trauma is just to breathe. You don't want to start to hyperventilate because that's just going to make things worse. After a tragedy, you might feel some long-term effects too. You might find yourself even going through the stages of grief. Now you see, I was only three months old when my dad died, so I don't really remember it. You see, I, didn't, I knew that I didn't have a dad, that was obvious to me, but I didn't know who he was or what he did. But as I got older and older and learned more and more, I started to go through the stages of grief in my own way. Starting with denial. I remember just being generally confused. My family and I would go and visit his grave and I just, I couldn't understand how a person was here but isn't here anymore. I couldn't understand the idea of death. But it's a pretty hard thing to explain to a three-year-old. Next, I started to go through some anger. You see, I just was so mad. How could these people do such terrible things to such innocent lives? My dad was just 31 on September 11th, and back home he had a giant family who loved him. Not to mention a three-month-old baby who was basically just born, who he just wanted to spend time and get to know. I just was so mad. How could they take him away from me? But I got older, and my mom explained to me that we have to run on love and not hate. We have to forgive, just as my dad would have wanted. Next, I began to bargain. You see, my dad was supposed to fly out on September 10th, but because of a fire at the airport, he had to reschedule to the next day. I just kept thinking, what if he had been on the right flight? Would he still be alive today? My family explained to me that Glick means luck in Yiddish, and I laughed at this, saying how lucky could he have been to be on that flight. But my family believes that it was fate. So many lives were lost that day, but even though his life was lost, he helped to save so many more as the plane was heading to an important building in Washington, D.C. As a fourth grader, my whole class wrote a research paper on our hero, and of course I picked my dad. You see, I was a little different from everyone else, because as everyone else was going through textbooks and websites to learn about someone who they didn't even know, I was using the same resources to learn about someone who I should have known, but didn't get to. It's a weird thing to learn about someone who should have told you their story from their own mouth, but you learn it from websites and papers and other people's. It's a really sad thing to do. And finally, it all led into acceptance. I'm 15 now, and I'm still trying to figure acceptance out. To put it simply, I miss him. I wish I could have gotten the opportunity to get to know him. I wish we could go skiing together, which we both love. I wish we could laugh over chocolate milkshakes, and I wish he could see my shows and my dance recitals. I wish he could see me speak right now. But my family, in his last moments, he said to them, you have to be happy for me and for Emmy. So we honor these words. We live our lives every day without hesitation, and we choose to integrate him in little ways, like when I get really mad at my parents, they're like, that's the exact same face. Don't you dare make that face, because I've seen that face a 100 times before. Or if I order a chocolate milkshake, they say, of course you would, because that's always what he ordered. After a tragedy, you have to find a way to cope. You might want to just bundle it all up inside, but that's not a really good coping strategy. Instead, it's a good idea to talk to people, maybe some who are even in the same situation as you. My family met with other families of Flight 93 on September 11th, which really helped because it's kind of comforting to know someone's going through the same thing as you. Another thing is just to get into a daily routine. Eventually, my mom went back to work, and she devoted all her time to taking care of me and our two pugs. We were our own little sort of family. Another thing is to find something that you love. And 
for my family, that's running. My family loves it so much that three of my aunts and my mom ran the New York City Marathon in his honor. Another thing is to celebrate and honor. You see, my aunt started Jeremy's Heroes, a foundation that brings community and sports to inner city schools. My dad loves sports, and we just want to share his passion with as many people as we can. Every year, September 11th rolls around, and we get a constant reminder of what happened. Instead of just putting, us, putting it behind us, which may have been easier, we don't. Instead, we meet where he's buried, and instead of just crying and grieving about his life, we smile and we celebrate. We go to one of his favorite restaurants and we all order chocolate milkshakes because as you know, that's what he loved. The kids play tag on the field outside and fish in a nearby pond. Instead of just crying, we look back on his whole life, not just his final moments, because that's not what made him a person. His final moments don't just define him, but his whole life did. Tragedies are inevitable, but it is up to us on how they shape us and what they make us become. As I take my path in life, I bring my dad with me wherever I go. Thank you.